So you're starting a brand new school year and your teacher is using Google Classroom. One small problem though, you've never used it before. What do you do? Welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new here, my name is Danielle Rochford. I am a grade seven and eight teacher in an online school located in Canada. I like to create videos that give tutorials, some technology tips, and every once in a while I throw some vlogging in here and there. If these are topics that interest you, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below. Let me set your mind at ease. Google Classroom is not a difficult program to learn. And today, we are gonna take a look at four main processes that you'll need to know in order to be successful with the program. We are gonna take a look at how you get logged in, where you can find your classes and assignments, how to submit your assignments and find your grades, and then how you can connect with your classmates. If you are already familiar with Google Classroom and just need a little refresher, I'm going to be including the timestamps in the description below of the different topics that we cover. Let's head on over to the computer now, shall we? The first step in getting logged into Google Classroom is navigating to the login page. You can do that by entering classroom.google.com into your web browser. Midway down the page, you will notice a blue button that says go to classroom. Click on that button. You will then be prompted to sign in to your Google account. This is where you will place your school email. Following that step, you will then be prompted to enter your password. This is going to be the password that you selected for your school email account. Once you've typed that in, press the next button. At this point, you will see the Google Classroom logo pop up um, and a spot just towards the bottom there that confirms the account that you're trying to log in with. If all looks correct, click the continue button. Now you will choose your role. Because you're a student, you will click on I'm a student. You are now on your Google Classroom dashboard. This is where you can see all of the classes that you have been invited to join or have already joined. Anytime that you log into Google Classroom following the first time, you will be brought to your classroom dashboard. And this is where you will be able to see and access all of your classes. Now, in order to join a class, it's nice and easy. From your dashboard, you can take a look at the classes that you have been asked to join, and there is a blue join button. All you need to do is click on that blue join button. Please don't press decline. That will decline your invitation, and then you'll need to contact your teacher in order to get the invitation again or to access a class code. So, if you've been invited to a classroom, all you need to do is click on that blue join button. Now that you've joined the class, you will be taken directly to the stream for that class. There's a number of things that you can view on this page, one of them being the upcoming assignments on the left-hand side. This will indicate any assignments that are coming due within the next week. They will be shown there for you. Additionally, in the middle of the page there, you will be able to see any type of updates that your teacher or other classmates have posted. Now what you see there actually depends on the settings that your teacher has placed onto the, the class itself. So for example, in my classes, um, you will simply see announcements that I make for the class. In other classes, you might see a combination of announcements as well as various assignments that have been posted, um, comments by classmates and things of that nature. So there are a number of different things that are possible to be able to see 
If you are part of my classes, what you will be limited to on the class stream page are the announcements for that class. The classwork page is where all the magic happens. This is where all of your assignments are laid out in the order that they should be completed and divided by topics. Are y'all still with me? Is it making sense so far? If it is, give me that thumbs up just below the video here. Let me know that you're with me, that you're understanding everything. But maybe you have some questions. If you do, put them in the comments below and I will be sure to answer those questions for you. There are a number of different types of assignments that you can be given on Google Classroom. Let's take a look at what some of those might be. Now, one thing that I want you to notice on this classwork page is that you have some icons that are gray and others that are in that nice bright color. See those ones with the nice bright color? Those are the ones where you have something to do. There is an activity that you need to do, either hand something in, answer a question, do some type of activity, maybe even mark it as done. So we have a fantastic colored system that helps us to be able to see really easily which tasks on our classwork page have something that need to be completed. The first type of assignment that you might end up coming across is a question assignment. Now in order to access your assignment, what you need to do is click on the title and it will expand your view to be able to see more details. But then what you'll want to do is you will want to click on view question and that will take you directly to the assignment page that will provide all the details that you need to know, any additional attachments that your teacher might want you to have access to. And then over in the right hand corner, you will see your options for answering this question. Now in the example today, it is a multiple choice question, so you have a couple of choices that you can choose from. You will make your choice and then click turn in. You will confirm that this is what you want to answer and then click turn in again. One other thing that you're able to do directly on the assignment page is send a private comment to your teacher. Private comments are located on the right hand side of the page. And all you need to do is click on the space and you can type your question or your statement, whatever message it is that you would like to send along to your teacher. And once you have typed everything that you need to, you simply hit post. This will send a notification directly to your teacher so that they know that there is a comment on an assignment that they need to take a look at. Something interesting to note, and one thing that I really do like about the Google Classroom Classwork page, is that once you've handed in an assignment, it is no longer that bright color on your classwork page. The thumbnail is now grayed out. So you can very easily see which tasks you have completed and which tasks are still left for you to do. Sometimes you might have an assignment given to you where you are not required to submit any files for evaluation, but you have a task that you are to complete. In that case, you will be directed in the instructions to mark the task as done once you have finished what you were supposed to. In order to do this, you open up the assignment, take a look at the instructions and any files that have been uploaded for you or links for you to follow, you complete the task. On the right hand side under your work, you simply need to click on the button, confirm that's what you want to do and that you are not required to upload any files, and then click on mark as done. The other type of assignment that you can have given to you is one where you need to supply work that you've done, upload a file or work on a file that your teacher has given to you. Once again, you open up the assignment from your classwork page. Down the center of the page, you can see all of the instructions that have been given to you. And so you make sure that you read through that carefully to know exactly what the expectations are. And then on the right hand side, under your work, if your teacher has provided a document for you, you will see one listed there. You simply need to click on it to open it. 
so that you can access the document and start typing on it. However, if there is no file already provided for you to work on, all you need to do is hit the Add or Create button. That will give you the option for adding files from your Google Drive, links to websites, or even uploading from your computer. Once you have completed all of the work for a particular assignment, and you've made sure that all of the files are attached that you need your teacher to have access to, you simply need to click the Turn It In button. Confirm that you indeed have everything ready there for your teacher and you are good to go for turning it in. Now, one thing that you may notice with your documents that you upload and turn in, you end up turning over ownership to your teacher. And so you only have view only access to your documents once they've been turned in. Say for example, you realized after turning something in that you indeed needed to add a few more items. Well, all you need to do then is click on the unsubmit button and that takes back ownership so that you are able to make more changes, you have editing privileges again, you fix what you need to, and then you can resubmit it to your teacher. Finally, we're going to take a look at a few ways that we are able to communicate with other people in our class. The first way is off of the class stream. If you recall, I mentioned that that is a place where a lot of announcements and things of that sort are posted. Well, if your teacher allows it in your Google Classroom, you can actually make comments on announcements. And so there can be some communication that happens that way. Additionally, there is a third tab at the top of our screen that we haven't taken a close look at yet, and that is the People tab. On this page, you're able to see who your teacher is, as well as who your classmates are. And not only that, but you'll notice that there's a little envelope icon on the right side of their names. If you click on this icon, it opens up a Gmail message directly to them. Congratulations, you stuck through to the end. You should now be feeling much more confident in your skills for using Google Classroom. I'd like to encourage you to go back, review, take a look at the different ways that you can use Google Classroom and practice. You can do this. And remember, if you have any questions, leave them for me in the comments below. Until next time. Thank you.